on to a story that has shocked us all this morning. A judge has taken the decision to name a 14-year-old boy who was found guilty of murdering five-year-old Logan Wandy alongside his stepfather, John Cole, and Logan's mother, Angharad Williamson. Craig Mulligan was moved into the family home with Logan just five days before his body was found dumped in a river with injuries that were likened to a severe car crash. This is despite the fact that he had previously threatened to kill the child and had been removed from his experienced foster family for terrorising the household. And prosecutors have said that the timing of the move and Logan's tragic death was no coincidence. So, uh, on the most of the papers today, the obviously big coverage on this, but um, we have the male here and obviously the, the teenage boy that's, that's been identified, Craig Mulligan. He's the big picture um, in the mail and the sun and the mirror have got a big piece as well. Sinetra, how do you feel? Do you feel comfortable about a teenager being identified? Do you know what it is, Jane? I, I just wonder who benefits from this decision. You know, who's winning? The family of the victim, well, the ones who were involved in his death they're not going to be feeling any better for seeing the face of this boy. And the public, who are never going to bump into him, do not need to be warned about him. He's going to go into the juvenile detention system. He's going to obviously be vilified there, so with no, no real chance of reform, because everybody in there is going to know his face. And when he comes out, we, the taxpayer, will end up paying for his new identity. And so, actually, who's winning? What is the, what's the payoff for putting his face there more than Logan's, who we should all be feeling more for? Um, so, for me, it's slightly sensationalised, putting his face in the paper. Do you not feel, in a way, Carol... I mean, it was the judge that made this mm. decision. So, pure, assuming that there must have been an important reason behind that. Yeah, uh... I'd be interested to know exactly why he made that decision, but... It was a woman, I think, actually, or, or, the judge. Yes, sorry, yeah. yeah, assuming that it's a man. Um, it, I, I think it's interesting because it, it wouldn't ordinarily be done, and also I think it's, it could be possible that it would open up some sort of windows to, as to why this happened, because it shouldn't have happened. And... You can't just sit back again and go, lessons will be learned. Because, as we know, they never are. And it happens again. And, and, it, and it's so awfully tragic. I, I did see about this story and I, I just chose not to read about it before I came in this morning because these are things that I, I can't really process. I can't actually get it through my head or into my head or why another human being might behave like that towards another human being. It's just so grotesque. Um, but I... I think that if, the re if there is a reason for it, it, and it is because it will open up some, some windows and, and make it a little bit more transparent as to why this happened, and somebody has to be to blame. You know, you can't... Obviously, you blame the, the, both the parents uh, for the death of this child and, and the teenager, but somebody put that teenager into that family mm. and and made that decision. It was the wrong decision and someone really needs to be culpable for that. And I know social services have a hard time and I know they're stretched, but social services are quite good at picking on parents who haven't really done anything wrong and yet you've got a child like this, the most vulnerable child, who's now dead and by all accounts suffered the most unbelievably horrific death. Mm. Slow and painful and... I mean, just dreadful, that if someone doesn't actually take responsibility for that, then it, that makes it even more horrific, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of with you, really. I, I, I sort of think, you know, the, the old phrase, sunlight is the best disinfectant. And I think sometimes when cases are left anonymous, uh, in, in a case like this where a, a, a child... You know, the age of criminality is 10. He was 13 when he did this, and his foster family had flagged him up as terrorising their household, uh, talking about killing. Uh, they, were, they were very concerned. Mm. And for me, the worry in this is that, yes, there are lots of brilliant social workers doing a fantastic job and they don't make the papers. I understand that. But here, there were very, very real failings. Mm. And actually, the social worker of the boy 
who ended up being involved in the killing of, of Logan, tried to contact Logan's social worker to express her concern at him being placed in this household, and she was ignored by someone in her own profession. And for me, that needs to be investigated. So and can, if it's, but can it only be investigated because, because, because of this? Because it's, if it's kept anonymous, all of us, you read an anonymous story and you move on with your life. And sometimes seeing the faces and being shocked at the thought of a 14-year-old that could behave like this and had presented so many red flags throughout his life, mm. medics even called, re re made red flags, all these people made red flags and he still got placed in that house. Yeah. And within five days of him being placed in that house, Logan was dead. But I now, get, the parents I get that. are as culpable. I'm yeah. not saying yeah. they're not. But I think that giving everybody, putting everything in the, in the media and putting it out there, it's only our shock mm. as public that is going to change anything. But yeah. how sad that it takes, like, for a, a teenage boy to kill a child that's in a home with a mum and a dad, two adults, that's what it takes for us to have the conversations mm -hmm. and for something to be done. And I just think, he, yes, he was part of it, but those parents, what annoys me is he's the poster boy yeah. of it. And there's two grown adults there. Their picture is tiny. Theirs should be just as big. If that mum should have known, if she knew that he had all those issues, why was exactly. why didn't she say he shouldn't be in Fo the house? The focus and has the been dads moved encouraged on. that behaviour. That, that, that's the a media thing, moved. though, isn't it? Because it's much more horrific to know that a young person, a child, a teenager, would behave. But how sad like that we that see adults and go. Well, I oh. know, I know, I know, I know. But that, you know, sadly, that happens a lot more often. But this is this is far more shocking, and that's why his picture mm. takes precedence in in the newspapers. But well, I'd know, like I'm not to... saying it's right, but no. that's how it is. Yeah. I would like to say that this is the last time we're going to discuss a case like this. But I not suspect, a chance. I suspect not.